given that Numenera and the Cypher system don't operate around combat, and instead focus on narrative development and discovery, there are a variety of unique ways to approach writing and running adventures. In many ways, people are free to come up with their own methods since there aren't strict rules for average player level, group size, or challenge ratings. This video will demonstrate a personal approach of mine to designing the basic skeleton of an adventure that will prioritize discovery and narrative development. This is one of many ways I approach writing adventures and parts of campaigns, and it can be tailored and modified very easily to fit a wide variety of applications. This method can work just using the Numenera Discovery and Destiny rules, though I'll point out a few areas where I would be likely to use other supplements to expand on some things. And to reiterate, this video covers merely one possible way to think of crafting Numenera adventures. There are many other approaches, but this is a fairly straightforward method that can be done rather quickly, generating a rough skeleton while providing opportunities for significant expansion. The approach I'm using here is not outlined in the Numenera books, but is instead an adaptation of some common techniques for writing fiction. While it isn't always important to have a clear beginning, middle, and end to a role-playing adventure, having a solid understanding of a potential sequence of events is great for GMs who need some solid ground to stand on during the game. And as one final note, this video will largely demonstrate an approach to writing a Numenera adventure that is somewhat linear and considers only a number of options before outlining a guide for what the sequence of events could possibly be. This sequence of events, though, can be as flexible or player-determined as one needs. Our first step will involve a consideration of where the adventure will take place within the Ninth World. If one is completely ambivalent about where to set the story, it could take place anywhere, but there are roughly three areas to consider in Numenera because these decisions will help frame the story and provide a foundation for inspiration. Setting a story in the Steadfast is great for adventures that want to feel like they're in or are very close to civilization and perhaps involve politics, crime, or other city-based intrigue. Setting a story in the beyond is great for adventures that may involve towns, cities, and settlements, but ones that are more remote and independent. The emphasis is usually on the unknown, using the lack of larger civilization to give it more room to breathe. Setting a story in beyond the beyond is great for adventures that want to hyper-focus on a particular wonder of the ninth world and wish to do so as far away from known civilization as possible. It's also a great place for home-brewed Numenera locations and settings. These three lenses are 30-foot thousand perspectives on what you can do with each of these, but they are good ways to roughly measure some of the themes you may wish to use in your adventure. For this video, I'll set the adventure in the steadfast. Within this lens, I can now start thinking of my adventure as taking place somewhere within or with proximity to large human settlements with established governments that have reached a relatively stable form of coexistence. From this, I'll focus on three main setting themes I'll sort of randomly associate with the steadfast. For this adventure, I came up with civilization, roads, and trade. You could come up with any other combination of words that feel appropriate for the steadfast as the broader setting of the adventure, and the more ambitious you wish to make this adventure, you could even go about creating more than three main setting themes. These themes will be important to return to, so it's a good idea to have quick access to them as writing the adventure continues. For now, I'll decide that the location will involve a trade-based town, which could probably be placed anywhere within the steadfast. Picking a story topic for Numenera can be done in a variety of ways. One of the most direct is to use the material in the books to find interesting hooks and potential leads for something unique and weird to happen. Since the adventure being built for this video uses the steadfast as its lens for the setting, a great way to go about this is to randomly choose one of the Nine Kingdoms and read about what's going on there, building the story out from there. In many cases, Numenera Discovery talks about active political and social situations occurring within the Steadfast that will provide an easy lead or point or person of interest. For this adventure, though, I'm going to use a random news story I came across. One of the ways I prefer to keep stock of interesting topics for Numenera is to regularly check places like Google News or Facebook or Twitter or get lost down a Wikipedia rabbit hole to find an interesting or weird story. 
At the time of putting this video together, I came across a Huffington Post piece talking about the discovery of a space hurricane and decided to theme my adventure on wild weather phenomena like this. The shorter the story, the easier you'll be able to adapt the main points, and since Numenera is a science fantasy game, we don't need to get into all of the intimate details of real-world scientific facts if we don't want to. Instead, we can take the overall essence of the story and use that to build out at least three main takeaways and work with them as ideas and themes. For the story on the space hurricane, I chose to focus on these three points. That the storm makes it rain electrons or particles instead of water, that it is the first discovery of its kind, and that changes in space weather can affect technology, particularly communications technology. A good thing to do at this point is to take a look at the three setting themes along with the story themes and see if looking at any of these sparks some interesting concepts for an adventure. If nothing comes up, that's totally fine. Oftentimes, however, one can merely compare a list like this and be able to jump in very quickly into drafting out an adventure. The next step can be done later on if a very clear and interesting story springs up from the first two steps. I have found recently, however, that by generating a list of ciphers, oddities, and an artifact or two is sometimes great for figuring out how to make things weird and root them in the adventure through the Numenera. Generating Numenera for an adventure can be done as randomly as one desires, especially considering the fact that ciphers, artifacts, and oddities are all provided in the form of numbered lists and charts in the books that one can roll on to quickly find interesting items. Another approach is to take a look at the available Numenera and select ones that fit well into the setting themes and story themes. For this adventure, I rolled randomly and got the following ciphers. A hunter seeker, a telepathy implant, a gas bomb, a temporal viewer, and an immobilizer. While the characters will encounter these ciphers as items to be found or purchased, they really are abilities afforded to the characters, and when looking for interesting challenges, these can be interesting points of inspiration for shaping different events and situations. Rolling randomly on the oddities table apparently got me a series of clothes and jewelry, as virtually everything was wearable. I came up with a cape that always billows, an indestructible scarf, an x-ray shirt, an amulet that projects holographic depictions of fish, and a device that tattoos a scorpion design on the user. Finally, I rolled for a random artifact. Artifacts award XP for their discovery, so you'll want to consider how many of these are appropriate for an adventure. Rolling in the Destiny rulebook, I came across a level 3 basic wearable workshop. While you can always be more selective with choosing these items and can even swap out randomly rolled ones that aren't as interesting to you, I do encourage sticking to the random results as you may find that you'll come up with more interesting outcomes, even if it doesn't feel like these immediately fit into your story and setting themes. So far, I've determined the setting and three themes I can associate with it. I then found an interesting story topic and picked out three things that stand out from there. Then I rolled up some random pieces of Numenera to populate the adventure with and to look for inspiration to. The next step can be as skeletal or fleshed out as you desire it to be. Sometimes an idea can be so interesting and inspirational that one only needs the most basic of story structure to provide at least somewhat of a guide should the story get too far off the rails. At a minimum, it can provide GMs with at least a sense of a certain sequence of events. This does start to build out some linearity in your adventure, however. For those GMs who don't want to have any sense of railroading and wish to run something that's a bit more open, sticking with the first two steps and just continuing to brainstorm off of those is probably all that one needs to do for Numenera. Taking inspiration from Dan Wells' seven-point story structure, I've adapted this model of looking at stories to fit RPGs and Numenera only slightly. There is a significant difference between writing narrative fiction and narrative RPGs, so some of the terms and approaches aren't a direct fit, but overall this provides a great framework for having a potential sequence of events for an adventure. The structure, as I've modified it for building out this adventure, consists of the following. A hook to get the players involved, a shift in perspective on the adventure, an added complication or twist, a midpoint where the party thinks about or plans out a response to the perspective shift and complication a second complication or twist, a second shift in perspective that allows the party to enact their plan, and a resolution that reveals the outcome of their actions. 
Taking each of these points and coming up with ideas for them can and should be done rather quickly and without much hesitation. You can always change and shape things later. For now, filling in these seven steps is the priority, and even if things don't entirely line up or make sense, you can shape and mold different points to work with a surprising degree of flexibility. If you find that you can't think of something to put into one of these points, you can always skip one and return to it later. Also, it is a great idea to jump back into your setting and story themes as well as the list of Numenera you've generated to find interesting solutions. It is also important to note that it isn't necessarily the GM's job to guide players down this adventure strand, but should instead be used as a way to track where the players are in the adventure to determine what lays around the bend for them. We'll start with the story Hook. This is anything that gains the party's interest or directly brings them into the start of the adventure. For our Space Hurricane story, we can come up with at least three, but the more the better. In taking a look at my setting and story themes, I came up with four quick hooks. One, the party hears of strange weather phenomena. Two, rain has apparently been transforming into destructive particles causing damage in the town. Three, the Order of Truth has mobilized efforts to study rumors of the unique and mysterious weather phenomena. The party has been hired to collect this information for them. And four, a hunting party has gotten lost as the Numenera they use to chart large areas of land has been altered or damaged from the weather. The first hook is very simple and always appropriate, especially for one-shot adventures that don't require complex ways to introduce a party. The second hook is based off of the Space Hurricane story which described raining electrons. I took this in a more disaster story direction by presenting it as a hazard, but I could always alter it or make it more weird. I'll sometimes roll random results from the lists offered in Injecting the Weird to put an additional twist on things or find different takes that I hadn't thought of. While I won't do this for this adventure being built in the video, just as an example, Injecting the Weird offered me a small ravine where gravity reverses for one second at the same time every day. I could figure out any number of ways to introduce this as an element of the adventure. For now, however, I'll leave this hook as just involving destructive particle rain. The third hook plays off of the setting theme of existing within the Steadfast, where in the Ninth World, the quasi-religious organization known as the Order of Truth has significant power and influence and can easily be a source for the party to gain information or work. Mysterious weather phenomena that results in raining particles of energy would certainly be something that would gain the attention of the Order, especially if it was in the Steadfast. The final hook is based off of the Huffington Post piece on the Space Hurricane where it mentions that space weather can affect and disrupt technology such as communication devices. Based off of this, I wondered if there could be a group of people who are lost as the weather phenomenon has scrambled some kind of technology they used to cover large distances. I decided to make this a group of hunters as the party may hear rumor of them getting lost. Depending on the complexity of the adventure, it may be helpful to narrow down the list of hooks. All of these can exist at the same time, which will allow for a number of different ways a party of varying interests could get involved with. The next section represents the first main development of the adventure, or the first source of conflict. This is what often happens after or as a result of the party taking the hook. Again, with all of these, I think the best approach is to write fast, jotting down the first thing that comes to mind. In my case, the first shift involves the party learning of a group of abhumans who believe the storm represents the birth of a god that they worship. The next movement creates an additional complication or adds another level of weird to the story. For this adventure, the abhumans will make it clear that they don't want anyone near the eye of the storm as they believe it is a sacred place, physically preventing the party by whatever means necessary from accessing it. The midpoint of the adventure is when players arrive at a moment where they are actively coming up with a plan of action. In this case, the party has likely come to some kind of decision about what they're going to do with all of the information they've gathered about the abhumans, their beliefs, and the coming storm. The second complication often prevents the PCs from fully enacting their plan. In this case, I decided that at this point, once the PCs are starting to make some decisions, the storm will appear and will start to increase in intensity, forcing the players to find shelter of some kind. The next shift involves a more direct realization of how the party can actualize their plan. I decided that the Abhumans could have gotten hold of a piece of Numenera that is making the storm more intense, and thus provides an opportunity for the players to enact control over the storm. The resolution is merely the results of everything the party has done so far. Oftentimes, one doesn't need to be specific about this and can sort of roleplay the end out. 
understanding the interests and goals of both the players and non-player characters should allow for a natural resolution that sees characters responding to what the party has changed about the situation. It may also depend on what exactly the hook the players took was in order to get into the adventure in the first place. For some GMs, this may be all one needs to run an adventure. Also, one shouldn't make the mistake of thinking that the party must go down these seven points in an exact order. This structure merely represents one possible set of events, and GMs can also draft out multiple adventure strands that represent a variety of different outcomes that might branch off of or connect with each other. Let's sum up everything done so far. I chose a part of the setting to place the adventure in and came up with three key story themes to think about as we move forward, that being civilization, roads, and trade. I chose a story based on a random news article about space hurricanes, and from that story, selected three themes. That the storm rains destructive particles, it's a first-of-its-kind discovery, and that the storm has other unwelcome effects on technology. It felt fitting to imagine a small trade town in the Steadfast that is having to deal with weird, wild, destructive weather. I then drew up a random set of ciphers, oddities, and artifacts to have at the ready for later. Finally, I came up with a sequence of events using what I refer to as an adventure strand, made up of seven distinct points that the players are likely to go through. At this point, a lot of GMs can take these ideas and just run with them, improvising where is necessary. The party will get involved in the details of strange weather that is causing some property destruction and is leading some travelers and hunters astray as it interferes with their technology. They may wish to explore this for their own curiosity or, since it is happening with some nearby proximity to civilization, different organizations such as the Order of Truth or the Convergence may be taking interest in this and could hire the party for any number of tasks related to exploring and discovering what is going on. The party will then learn of a group of abhumans who worship the storm. These abhumans prohibit the PCs from going near the storm as they consider it sacred. The storm increases in intensity, the party learns that the abhumans have access to something that can control the storm, and then the party makes a decision on how to respond to the storm, probably using the device the abhumans have to stop it. This sequence of events can happen in a bunch of different ways, and at this point, GMs who are great at improvising can probably just run with these basic concepts, and can think of some other possible outcomes or ideas. By filling out this adventure with some more detail, however, things can get very rich, interesting, and open up some more details. The adventure as it stands right now is mostly an outline that mentions key elements such as the storm and the abhumans. One can pick any part of this adventure and start filling it out with more details, but for now I'm going to start by taking a look at my seven points and asking questions of them to flesh them out a bit more. Taking a look at the first perspective shift of my adventure, that being the PCs encountering the abhumans and learning about their religion, I'll brainstorm a few ways this might actually happen. It feels totally natural for the players to simply come upon the abhumans by exploring the region where the adventure is set. Reflecting on my setting themes, I know that the story takes place in a civilized area of the world, perhaps near roads and sites of trade. As a result, the abhumans are likely hiding somewhere secluded, such as a patch of forest, a cave, or have taken up residence in some ancient ruin that's a ways away from the roads. They also may not be very large in number since that will help them hide. At this point, I'll want to flesh out who these abhumans are a bit more. Perusing the list of available creatures in Numenera Discovery, I went with the ninth world's classic Margers, strange nomadic abhumans who often appear to be a cross between a human and a goat. They are often described as mostly sentient, and it seems that they stick to dry wastelands. I can take this and tailor it as necessary and allow it to influence my setting some more, or can adapt what's written in the rulebook to fit the story I'm thinking of. For my own purposes, this will be a group of about a dozen Marger who live in a dense forest area near the Eye of the Storm that has been growing recently. They have attached religious significance to this storm and are trying to deter anyone from getting near it. As it outlines in the book, the Marger are a level 2 creature with some strengths in key areas. I've decided to give them a Marger leader, choosing to take the basic frame of the Warlord character NPC type to create a level 5 Marger who's likely to put up a good fight for the PCs should they choose to engage the Marger in direct conflict. Given their religious nature, I also decided to give them a sort of Marger profit by kitbashing in the nano NPC type listed in Discovery. I used the tools provided by donwan.bin.sh to generate a list of names, modifying a list of orcish names as it felt 
felt like these would fit well for the Marger. I selected two of these interesting names to represent the Warlord and the Nano for the Marger as Luga and Lukeel, respectively. I'll consider one additional way the party could come to learn of the Marker, and this one involves the hook related to the Lost Hunting Party. After spending some time scouring the environment, the party may come to track down the Lost Hunting Party, who tell the characters of a strange collection of Marger they've been trying to track down but have failed to do so and may have even gotten lost after the storm messed with their equipment. They may mention that the Marger seem different than your usual group of wild abhuman raiders, that they appear to be conducting weird rituals and using bits of Numenera that they think is making the storm worse. From this, I'll cast the hunting group as smaller than the marker, which would explain why they're keeping their distance. This will be a group of three hunters and one navigator who's using technology that has been malfunctioning due to the storm. I'll use the basic stats from the town guard NPCs for two of the hunters, the explorer for the remaining hunter, and the nano stats for the navigator. In the cipher system, one can always incorporate larger stat blocks as they are provided in the books for creatures and NPCs, but it also sometimes is just efficient to assign a level to an NPC to get a sense of how they'll factor into difficulty checks and not do much work beyond that. Most of this can be done on the fly rather easily. Now I'll consider my second perspective shift, the realization that the Marger contain a piece of Numenera that appears to interact with the storm in some way. While the solution for this adventure may seem to be nothing more than gaining this item by means of diplomacy, trade, or force, that's fine for now. What I'm interested in doing is making this weird and unique, and that's where I'll turn to my list of oddities to look for some inspiration. Reviewing this list, I'll go with the amulet that projects the holograms of fish and make this the item that the Marger are using to interface with the storm. With a bit of creative interpretation, I've decided that should the party get a direct look at the storm, they will in fact see what appears to be massive fish or sea creatures emerging in and out of the billowing clouds. The Marger appear to speak into the amulet, and the fish creatures it projects appear to be communicating in some way back to them. The Marger have ascribed religious significance to this interaction and believe these to be deities that will emerge from the storm. At this point, the party may start to determine what they're going to do with all of this information. This is when I'll introduce the second complication and will make achieving that goal a little more challenging. Complication 2 introduces the effects of the storm more directly. Depending on where the party is, whether they are with the Marger, the Hunters, or on their own, they may have to take shelter somewhere. If they are on their own, they may happen upon an abandoned building that with a bit of work they can use as a shelter. If they are with the Marger or the Hunters, they may have to work with these NPCs to build shelter and survive the coming particle rain. If I want to include some combat, I may even decide that along with the storm, strange sea-like creatures drop from the sky and attack anything on sight. The party during all of this may even come to realize that the event isn't a storm, but perhaps a wild tear in dimensional space through which beings from another place are attempting to cross over. All of this roots back to the fish amulet oddity and comes about just by jotting down ideas that spring from it and running with it, seeing how they connect, modify, or exaggerate the story and the setting. Should the PCs try to use the amulet, regardless of how they may have managed to interact with it, they may discover that it's actually a communication device that allows the PCs to talk with, as best they can, whatever strange creatures are coming through the storm. It is likely that through here, they can find a solution to the storm. Maybe they can convince the creatures to return to where they came from, should that be possible. Maybe they can reason with the creatures and have them guide the storm to a more remote location where there won't be so much damage to life and property. And depending on how powerful the PCs are and the interests of the group, this could even lead to a sort of boss fight for a conclusion. Numenera is a game about discovery, and while the adventure I have built out so far does involve discovery, it is a good idea to think about the broader themes of the adventure to be clear about what challenges and rewards potentially are in store for the players. In keeping with the previous method of outlining themes, I've come up with three adventure themes based on the setting, story, and adventure strand. Regardless of the true nature of the storm, it fits clearly in with the many strange and wild phenomena of the Ninth World. 
surviving such things is often a part of living in this setting. The PCs will likely see this firsthand as they observe any damage the storm has caused, and the chaos of them needing to survive it themselves as it gets closer. As a GM, I may consider awarding XP based on what the players have discovered about surviving in the Ninth World. The Marger clearly have developed a set of beliefs about the storm and the amulet, but are they wrong to imagine whatever creatures are coming through it as gods? These beings could be difficult to understand, but whatever powers that are allowing them to appear in the Ninth World is certainly mysterious. The Marger have attached some serious significance to their arrival. Perhaps this is a tribe of Marger who have a deep history that leads up to this moment and is something the players may learn directly or indirectly from them. There's also the question of how the Marger came to own this amulet and whatever story hooks that may additionally sprout from that. I might consider awarding XP based on what the players learn or understand about the Marger's beliefs about the storm. The players may very well likely come into contact with the entities on the other side of the storm. This may be through combat should I choose to have hostile creatures emerge, or it may be through communication via the amulet the Marger have in their possession. What could the party discover by communicating with these beings? Is communication even possible? Could the PCs learn or discover interesting things about the origin of these creatures and what their arrival means? I would likely award XP based on what the players discover about the storm and the creatures coming through it. At this point, the adventure is more or less ready to play, complete with a sequence of events, NPCs, and some secrets and discoveries to uncover. The oddity I generated in the earlier steps ended up being pretty important to determining a significant chunk of most of the story. That creatures resembling fish or sea creatures are coming through a dimensional tear in reality that almost looks like a storm. I didn't find other narrative uses for the remaining oddities, but will likely keep them on hand should I feel the need to throw in an odd item here or there. My ciphers and the artifact, however, didn't find such a natural placement. Of the five ciphers I generated, three of them, the Hunter Seeker, Gas Bomb, and Immobilizer, work well for conflict and combat and would make sense as items the hunting party likely has on them. As such, I'll place these items with them and have them up for sale or trade to the players. The Telepathy Implant and Temporal Viewer can aid with role-playing and exploring the environment, so I may choose to place these near to where they may be used. The telepathy implant could certainly be used to ease communication with the Marger, and the temporal viewer may help the party learn of some recent events that could help them track down the hunting party or the Marger. As such, I may decide to include a crashed caravan, or perhaps something that was destroyed from the particle rain, or even a random abandoned ruin that isn't too large but contains some salvage and ciphers. The artifact, the level 3 wearable workshop, also didn't find an immediate place in the adventure. I could always swap it out for another artifact that's a more natural fit. Instead, however, I could choose to place the wearable workshop with the hunting party. Perhaps the navigator uses it and he'll consider offering it to the party in exchange for their help in dealing with the Marger. Perhaps he had to abandon it since it stopped working due to the storm and now the Marger have come across it and are using it in some way for their purposes. Perhaps an abandoned structure the party takes shelter in as the storm increases is a former workshop for a nano or a right, and this device was left behind and could even be of use in fortifying the shelter. While that takes care of the Numenera in the adventure, I may also wish to draw up a list of random NPCs, some shops and other simple locations the party is likely to come across. I may also wish to come up with a sense of what the local environment is like, how the people dress and talk, what items are commonly traded here, what animals are commonly hunted or corralled here. I may also decide to flesh out some of the challenges a little more, such as seeking shelter from the storm. I could come up with a list of different difficulties for performing certain actions, such as repairing the roof of the structure or securing the walls. I could come up with a list of items and challenges should the PCs wish to take shelter with either the hunting party or the marker, with unique difficulties and challenges on either side. For those who want to go and stat out every possible contingency they can think of, taking stock of the adventure and finding unique spots to insert challenges that make sense to the plot's complications and shifts is very effective. The elegance and simplicity of the cipher system and its 10 levels of difficulty, however, make it fairly easy to come up with ideas and difficulties on the spot. All that remains is to name the adventure. Given the coming storm, the theme of fish and sea creatures, I like the ocean's arrival as a cool name. Also, perhaps I want to give a bit more character to the Marger Prophet and name the adventure as dealing with them. The Prophet of the Deep works very well for this.
After moving through all of these steps, let's take a look at what this adventure is. The party will learn of strange weather phenomena affecting a trading town in the Steadfast. It appears that burning particles sometimes rain down and set fires to homes and structures. The storm also appears to be causing problems with Numenera, technology, and communications devices, leading to a hunting party that is more than a few days late from when they were expected to come home. In investigating the area, the party will come to learn of a group of Margar who have assigned religious significance to the storm, believing that gods of some kind will emerge from it. These are the words of a specific Margar who appears to be a prophet of some kind. Shortly after this, the storm will intensify, forcing the PCs to take shelter wherever they can, and possibly even defend against bizarre, sea-like creatures who appear to be dropping from the sky. They will come to learn about an amulet the Margar Prophet wears, a strange contraption that displays holographic fish and sea creatures that match what the PCs may have observed in the sky. They learn that they can communicate with these beings through the amulet, but they'll have to convince the Margar Prophet to let them have access to it. If the party manages to communicate with the beings coming through the storm, they may be able to convince them to stay where they are, or have them emerge somewhere where it's less dangerous for people. All of this is set in an area of the Steadfast, but it could be located anywhere close to civilization, probably near a trading route of some kind, making disruption or damage to the area particularly inconvenient for its inhabitants. This is a fully functional adventure now, which can continue to be expanded upon by reviewing each of the seven main adventure story points it goes through and looking for ways to add more complications, weird events, or other possible outcomes. Also, the adventure does involve some common tropes for a standard role-playing game adventure, so some of the particulars like the Margar religion or the missing hunting party could be swapped out for different concepts that slot into the same narrative function. You may be asking, what level or tier is this adventure? This is largely up to the GM as evidenced by the adventure's reliance on narrative discovery. Scaling up or down the difficulty is only a matter of considering how hard different challenges will be. Is the storm particularly violent enough that only the toughest and smartest party will likely succeed? Are the Margar sufficiently intelligent and strong enough to withstand the convincing or strong arming of an average band of adventurers? Modifying the difficulty is fairly straightforward, so the question of level or tier may instead be more appropriate in addressing how profound the discovery is and how large the scope should be for characters of a particular skill level. I'll likely do a future video elaborating on this point in particular. Overall, this is a fairly quick and efficient way to come up with and structure out a random adventure in Numenera using little else than the core rules and a few websites. It can be followed through all the way, or pieces of it can be used to flesh out parts that will be added to later or improvised from during the game. It's a solid way to line up a sequence of events that leads to characters discovering unique experiences in the ninth world. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope sharing one of my many approaches to writing Numenera adventures is helpful, and if you'd like more Numenera-related content, please be sure to subscribe to the Infinite Construct for new videos on a regular basis.